this evening, I want, to, I want to share my heart with you, and I began two weeks ago sharing that, and around a word for tonight, and I don't want it, it's not just a word for this coming year, I want to share a word for this next decade. And I want to share an apostolic word, amen, for this next decade. And then we get ready. We get ready for what God wants to do. And this last month, as I was seeking the Lord, I was hearing invitation, invitation, the word invitation. And I believe that this next, this next season, is going to be a, a season where God is saying, I want you to say yes to your invitation. And you know, this morning, I was just meditating, and I, it came to my remembrance uh, that I've also received an invitation for next year. And I thought, I'm going to share it with you. I wasn't going to say anything until February when I knew I had my visa. So I don't have my visa yet, but I will have my visa. So I got an invitation to go to India, all right? And this is an annual prayer event. Last year, they had over 200,000 people there. And this year, it's going to be in a stadium. And so we went to, we, we were invited to a church, to like a conference in New Jersey when we were there in June. To be honest with you, Pastor Samuel was with me, and we were thinking, how did we land up here? That's what we really were thinking. But we said yes to an invitation. About a month ago, we received this message saying, that one of the organizers for this event was in that service. And R Ravi Zacharias, how many of you know who Ravi Zacharias is? He, he, was, he was the speaker for this event, and he, he had to cancel. And this person that was at this place in New Jersey has asked me, to go and be the speaker, I'm thinking, my goodness, what, Ravi Zacharias, you understand, I would have to go to university for 10 years just to keep up. And you're saying, what are you going to say? I don't know, but what I am going to tell them is there's a, there's a look and there's a sound to hunger, and we're going to stir up an anointing in that place, Amen. And I was thinking this morning, you know what? That is an invitation. And we are in a season. I believe the next 10 years is going to be a season where God is saying, say yes to your invitation, no matter how small. I believe God has been speaking to people already around things, issues, life issues, choices, marriage, Business opportunities. Whatever's going to happen in your life, there's something been happening in your heart. And God is saying, say yes. Can somebody just say yes? yes. God says, say yes to your invitation. Because your invitation is about to open up a door for you that you never thought was possible or even expected. Your invitation is going to be beyond your intelligence level. Your invitation will be beyond your qualification level. But favor shall be upon your life. And that invitation is coming to your desk in the name of Jesus. Amen. So everything begins with an invitation. I believe we are in a season where we need to say yes to what God wants to do. Bradford, UK. I have an announcement I said to you I will share tonight. 
And that started, I, I want to tell you, it started as an invitation to go. And, and I said to my mom, no. And then I went the following week to a conference where Apostle Nicky had me stand up. And he said, God is sending you to Cape Town. I said, hallelujah, God is sending you. And then he said, and don't shut your ear to England. And I said, get behind me, you devil. I really, I was upset. I said, Lord, why did you even speak to him? Because I was thinking, this is trouble. And when he said that, the whole night I was plagued. So I phoned my mom and said, okay, I believe God is sending Acts Church to England. So I said, well, then we have to go. And so we got to this church, and I want to tell you, it was like broken down. There's the, there was so much work to do. And we did as much as we could do in 10 days just to have, be able to hold the service there that, the way that we wanted to, to do it. But there's, there's rooms that were like, you know, just used as dump sites. This building is, I mean, it's been closed for 100 years. It's only the last four years they were renovating, Closed. The toilets aren't finished. The, there was no uh, heating inside there. There's so much work to do there. So we had somebody, uh, we had somebody do a whole, a whole thing about how much it's going to cost just to get every room kind of fixed up. But this is what happened. About, uh, we, were, we were there in England. And there was a man that contacted my mom. He said, look, and, and he knows my mom from a conference that, that she did in the United States in the last year or two. He said, look, he says, God just spoke to me. He said, God says, I need to support you. What is happening? So my mom said, well, you won't believe this. So this, this opportunity is open up for Bradford, and we're here right now. And, and this was on Facebook. And, and we, were like, we were like, wow, how, how did God even know? How did this man even know? He said, God told me I need to support you. Then for a week, we thought he's going to send money, like immediately. For a week, he didn't, we didn't even hear from him. On Facebook Messenger, didn't read his messages or anything. And then we had quotes done 40 something thousand pounds, 800 and something thousand rand on a building that you're renting. Yeah, sure. Just turn to somebody next to you and say, sure. So we, we didn't have that money. We didn't want to spend it on a building that you're renting. So we, so we had this guy do the whole every single, we said go to every single room and, and put there what needs to be done. Put it on a quote and put it on a piece of paper. And that was done like the last night while we were there. So I said to my mom tonight, when you're in your room, email it to America. They're still awake. Send it there. Well, when we were back, and I told you just a week ago, we received good news. Let me tell you what the good news is. This man responded. And he basically said in his message, Lil, that looks fine. Thank you very much. Me and my friends, we're going to pay for the whole lot. We're going to send all the money for the whole thing. Now, I can see you're not excited. I, I know why. Because you wanted the money. But it's amazing, church, that a man across the world will hear a sound from heaven saying, I want you to support something when somebody said yes. God is waiting for your yes. It doesn't matter how messed up the building is. It doesn't matter how small the opportunity is in New Jersey. You don't know what's at the end of a yes. Many people have missed their opportunity because they looked at the outside and said, mm, this is just too, this is too small for me. It's true. And I shared with you about Abraham, how, how God called Abraham. And, and I want to read this to you. And, I, and there's a few things I want to say f tonight. Abraham. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 8, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. 
and he went out not knowing where he was going. He was 75 years old, ladies and gentlemen. He was at retirement age. <laughs> and you might say, well, in those days it was different. I don't think so because it was just a few years after that when he, you knew his wife was barren. And the Bible says this concerning him. It says his body was dead. So he wasn't no spring chicken. He was responding to something that God said. And I shared with you that that word, what it meant is this, is that while God was speaking to him, there was a yes on the inside. While God was calling him, he was already prepared in his heart to say, I'm going. Now here, I can just imagine what his family said to him. They said, hey, grandpa, just relax. You're retiring. What about your wealth? What's going to happen to you? You're going to lose everything you have. Where are you going? He says, the Bible says there he went not knowing where he was going. Who in their right mind leaves for a destination that they don't know where they're going to? But he went out. He had a yes. This is Abraham, the father of our faith, the father of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob had the patriarchs, the 12 sons, the tribes of Israel. From the tribes of Israel comes Jesus. From Jesus comes the church. Abraham, it started with Abraham that he would obey God and just have a little yes on the inside. I believe in this next season, a, a prophetic word for our church and for you. That there are invitations coming that are about to open doors that you never thought possible for your next generation and the next generation after you. Something's going to happen. Can somebody just say, yes! yes. What is that? It's, an, it's a season where, we, where God is saying, I want you to speak what I'm saying. Speak what I'm saying. Speak my word. That's why even when Abraham had no children, God had said to him, I'm giving you a land and I'm giving you a people. You shall have a people and you shall be blessed on the face of the earth. And through you all the nations shall be blessed. That's why he just began to say what God was saying. Every time he met somebody, he said, my name is Abraham. What does it mean? I am the father of many nations. I want you in this next season, begin to say what God is saying. Just agree with the word of God. Agree with the plan of God. Agree with the dream that God has for your life. Whatever this word says, just get up in the morning. Start speaking the word. I, I believe we're in a season where we need, we need Bible literacy back in our lives. Amen. So we know what the Bible says. So we can do it and see His power in our lives. And so faith requires sacrifice. I love Isaiah 6 verse 8. God says, God says to Isaiah, who shall we send? And Isaiah says, send me. I will go. Let me say this to you. If you see a need... There's your invitation. Let me say it this side. If you see a need, there is your invitation. Amen. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, did you know that this great man was a Started with teaching children in children's church. Thank you, sister. <laughs> and I was in that building there in England, and the one room that is a total disaster, apparently is where he kept his donkey. Do you know what he did with the donkey? He put it onto it, he connected a little cart to it, and it went around town collecting children to bring them to church. Somebody with a donkey said yes. I'm trying to stir you something. I'm trying to stir you up to say yes to opportunity. 
When you see a need, say yes. When you see an opportunity, say yes. When you hear the Lord speak, say yes. Even if there's a donkey involved. It takes obedience. If you're going to see breakthrough, it's going to take obedience. You hear the voice of God and you do it. It's going to take trust. Let me give you an example. Abraham leaves and he comes after some years to a certain place. Tammy preached on this a few weeks ago. There's a, there's a king, Abimelech. Abraham was worried that they would want to take Sarah, his wife, to be his wife. So you know what he says to her? He says to her, just tell them you're my sister. Because if they hear you're my wife, I might die. I, I want to hear some wives in this room right now. This man is saying to his wife, listen, just go with that guy. Sleep in his house tonight. Because I don't care what happens to you, but I don't care what happens to me. Are there any women in this place that are hearing what I'm saying right now? And, and she goes, and, and the Bible says that she, she went in obedience to, to, to Abraham without fear, trusting the Lord. Let, let me tell you something. When you obey the invitation, there are going to be times where it's going to take absolute trust and faith in God that He's going to keep you through it all. Through it all. The, can you imagine the faith of this woman? As, she, as she's been taken away by another man, a king. And that night, the king had a dream. And in the dream, God said, don't you dare touch this woman. She's a wife of Abraham. He was so mad the next day. He said, Abraham, why didn't you tell me that this is your wife? He sent them on. But I just thought to myself, Who's this Sarah that could just say in the midst of her husband's stupidity, my God is greater than your stupidity. Are you hearing me, somebody? I, we are in a season where there's stuff that's going to be happening in your life. You're not going to understand why it's happening. But God's looking for somebody to stay in faith, to stay in confidence with God and say, my God is greater than what I'm facing right now. That takes trust. To, to hear the voice of God takes obedience, takes sacrifice, takes trust. And it takes spiritual eyesight. Which means you have to see what God sees when He speaks to you. In other words, when God speaks to you, you don't just see the donkey in front of you. But you see the next generation of pastors and the next generation of evangelists and the next generation of prophets and the next generation of, of God's people. And so God speaks to Abraham. So let me read this to you now and just go to the next level here. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Did you know it was 800 years later. When Israel went into Canaan. Eight hundred years he waited. Verse 9 says, By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. In other words, the Bible is teaching us, not only did he believe that there was a Canaan, but he had seen, he had spiritual sight, he had seen eternity with the Father. 
He had seen the heavenly Jerusalem. And he began to long for this. He began to long for eternity with God. And what God is teaching us here, church, he's saying, be like Abraham. Live, live in this world. Not loving this world, but live in this world as a sojourner. In other words, we're just passing through. Somebody say, I'm passing through. Do you believe that tonight? Do you really believe that? I'm just passing through. Can you live like Abraham? That this man would give up his whole house that had foundations for a tent in the wilderness. That he would give up everything that he's built in his life for a place that was not his own. And he did that. He said, I, I'm living like this because I have seen something. I've seen eternity. I've seen Christ. And right now I want to say to you, church, we need, to, we need a shift in the church. In South Africa, in Africa, and around the world. You know, everything is around stuff. You can go onto TV and see the 10 best cribs in America. The cars of the celebrities. And we even have magazines for the rich. We have programs dedicated so we can see what we don't have. <laughs> and we are being trained and manipulated in the world right now. And I want to tell you, it's making the church sick. We have preachers that are doing the same thing. They want to celebrate their belts and their watches and their cars and their houses. When my Bible says, this is not my world, I'm passing through. <laughs> passing through. Some people, when Jesus comes back, they're going to be crying all the way to heaven as they say bye-bye to all this stuff. We are sick. And I'm, I'm giving you, can I just be an apostle? This next 10 years, there is going to be such a sound that's going to go out. We're going to speak the word. We're going to speak the promises of God and the reality of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to, I want to show you something. Can I just have a few minutes? You know, the Bible says this. Do not love the world. All that is in the world. If you love the world, you don't love the Father. And it says in verse 17, this world is passing away. I, I, I want to, I, tonight I want to leave you sleepless. I, I want you to, to consider, have, do you love eternity? The Bible says we have loved his appearing. That the Lord is more precious than any gold or silver or anything you can have. Do you love Jesus more than this world? I want to ask you Christians, I want to ask you this question. Is your heart given to covetousness or do you long for your Savior? Where the Bible says, when we see Him, we shall be like Him. I, I want to I wanna upset you today on this New Year's Eve. I want to upset your spirit. I want you to have a sleepless night. Asking yourself, are you really ready for Jesus? Are you ready for him to come? The Bible says this. That there, there will be false preachers, false teachers. In 2 Peter chapter 2. Uh, prophets, teachers bring in destructive heresies. Many will follow their ways. And verse 3 says, by covetousness, they will exploit you. Ask your heart tonight. What are you willing, what price are you willing to pay for this world? What price are you willing to pay? Because that's the message that's going out there. Church, I speak as an apostle tonight. This next 10 years, 
We're going to see a church that's going to arise. And I'm going to tell you, what is the message? The message is going to be purity and holiness. i tell you why. The Bible says He's coming for a pure and spotless bride. Can somebody in Acts Church say hallelujah? hallelujah. I can see you're not too excited about Jesus coming. Let, let, let me read something else for you. Let, let me read something else for you. Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Let, let, let me just say this now. We're going to have to fight covetousness and the message of covetousness. Because actually, let me find another verse quickly. If we go to the book of Colossians, listen to this. Now, now let me just say this to you. Let me say this to you, church. There's another, there's another thing that's in the world right now, which I want to refute as a church. There is those that believe that the second coming of Jesus has already taken place. It's called preterism. Preterists. You get half preterists, you get full preterists. And the end of this journey is the teaching of immortality. That you don't die. But I've come to tell somebody... The Bible is very clear. I think it's in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It says, it is appointed for man to live once, <laughs> to die once, and after that, the judgment. Actually, what they believe is that in AD 70, when, the, when Jerusalem was destroyed, that the, that the coming of the Lord came. There are preachers that you know that secretly believe this. This is going to become a sound in the next 10 years. I'm telling you now so that you're aware. That why I hate this doctrine is because it doesn't prepare me to be ready for the coming. It doesn't prepare me to love the coming. I have a question for those who believe this. The Bible says at his second coming, I receive a new body. And I've come to tell you, I'm not very impressed. <laughs> the Bible says, all shall see him and behold him. That has not happened. It says, as he came in the beginning, he shall come again. No, my dear friends, Jesus Christ is coming again in the cloud of glory. And when he appears, we shall be with him. There is a generation that will live forever, and that is the generation that is there when he comes. But there, there's this thing of the kingdom coming now, and we're slowly getting better, and the world is getting better, and, 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 and all this nonsense. I want to tell you right now, I, the Bible says, Colossians 3 verse 1, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth, for you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, you also will appear with Him in glory. Therefore, Put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. This is my question to men of God that want to put on their Facebook pages their latest collection of something. What have you got to say about Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5? Put it to death. But instead, they're reviving it in the hearts of the people in the church. I had an interesting conversation with somebody by the name of Neil today. And he said, and, okay, don't worry. 
Tell me you can help me. So. Hallelujah, everybody. Now listen, listen to me. I had an interesting conversation with Neil. This is what he said to me. He said, you know what? There are so many Christians that are unhappy, that are depressed. They, they have no joy in their life. Do you know why? Because in their hearts, they're longing for that. They're looking at magazines, the TV programs, everything they don't have. And they've lost the joy of the Lord. Can somebody say something needs to change? Something needs to change. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter. Doesn't matter who says it, doesn't matter how you got it, doesn't matter, you know, this is word, letter, spirit. Uh, today would be YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. As if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. This is not a new doctrine. It was there at the beginning. Why? If Satan gets us to believe that, I, why, 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 why does Satan, because the Bible says this. Okay, we're going to come back there. Can I go to one more scripture? I promise you, we're not going to miss midnight, okay? Come on, just can somebody give the Lord a hand right now? Give the hand of the Lord right now. I'm preaching an apostolic message. All right. Listen to this. 1 John chapter 3 from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us. We, we, sh we should be so opposite to the world. So opposite. You should be so satisfied with Jesus, no matter what is happening in your life, I can tell you right now, there's Christians, they're willing, they're willing to lie, to cheat, and to steal, to get what another brother has, not in the name of the Lord, in the name of covetousness, and that, that isn't right, it's, it's just not right, church, God says, what men of love we ought to have, that we should be called children of God, therefore the world does not know us, beloved, now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He's revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. I've always loved this one passage of Scripture. David says this. David says this. This is the, this is the King David. He says, I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. I, I, I want to say to the prophets, prophesy to the nation, prophesy righteousness, prophesy a return to the Lord, prophesy the name of the king, prophesy that in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall be like him, like him. And everyone who has this hope, everyone who has this hope, everyone who has this hope. Hope. When last did you think of heaven? You, you're chasing gold. Do you know the gold is nothing to God? In heaven, the streets are made of gold. God says, this is the least in my kingdom. Because why? There, is, there are things so much more precious than gold. Do you want to know who it is? What, what is so precious? The Bible says there's no sun in heaven. Do you know why? Because his radiance fills the place. His glory fills the place. There's, the Bible says this in the book of Psalms 119. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. When last did you... Go to sleep excited that Jesus would come. 
to see that glorious thing that no eye has seen and no ear has heard the glorious things that God has prepared for those who love Him. He said, I go to prepare a place for you and I shall return. Brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. And our gathering together to Him, we ask you, don't be shaken, don't be as if the day of the Lord has already come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. There's going to be a shaking in the church. People will follow after the things of this world more than after the heart of the Father. There is a prophet coming. He's called the Antichrist. And he opposes and exalts himself. You will hear that the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. Because when they speak, they will speak, I, me, my, and myself. And he exalts himself. And he shall go to the temple of the Lord. And the Bible says this in verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with unrighteous deception among those who perish. And they didn't love the truth. And the Bible says for this reason God will send them a strong delusion. That they should believe the lie. They will believe the lie that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. North Cam uh, South Campus, West End, don't worry. I'm going to hand over shortly to you. Amen. Acts chapter 3. Verse 22, for Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet, who is that? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenants which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Why from your iniquities? It was that that kept me from that. He said, I must come and shed my blood that you be forgiven and washed. Why? Then you shall receive an inheritance. That when I have turned from my sin, as Abraham turned from Ur, as he turned from his backslidden life, as he turned from what held him in the, in the world, he caught a vision of heaven. And more of a vision of heaven. It was a vision that I shall be with him. The one who calls himself Jehovah. I will be with the Lord. I will be with the Lord. No matter your state, no matter who you are. If you are born again, there's a day coming. You shall be with the Lord. Even if you die before the glorious day that he comes. The Bible says this. To be absent from the body is to be present with can somebody just raise your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I love you. Just tell him, South Campus, just tell him, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I want you to lay your, lay, just double check your heart right now. South Campus, rest in. Just check your heart and say, right now, I lay aside all the cares of this world. And Lord Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Let me see that glorious day that I not be deceived. 
Church, listen to me. I want to say this. I want to say this. Jesus said this, these words. He said, you shall no longer pray to me. From now on, you shall pray to your Father in my name. In my name. I am a ship, but I'm not your Father. May I introduce you to your Father? Look up. That's your Father. Like, can I introduce you to your prophet? His name is Jesus Christ. Come in the likeness of Moses. That's your prophet. I don't pray through Mary. I don't pray through a prophet. I don't pray through an idol. I pray in the name of my prophet, Jesus Christ of Nazareth.